Morning. Yeah, Sunday morning. Sunday school hour. See who is it out there? It tells me twenty minutes. He's not looking. <laughs> now he is. Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, uh, I did talk to a pastor. Well, I didn't really talk to him, but because I've been checking his house and doing things for him, because you know we work out and all that. He sent me a message, and I said thanks for the warning. He may. He may be back tonight. He said he's not, you know, not sure, but they've been doing good. And, uh, but yeah, the Sunday school, when you say hour, gee, I don't want to do that, but, um, can you still hear me? Yeah. Don't be too loud. That's why my wife, I always say that's why she stayed home, but no. I met with her last night. She didn't get home until 1230, so, but, uh, Sunday school, you know, I, that's why I took my coat off. He said, you don't have to wear the coat at least. But uh, it's, I don't know, it's, a, it's always a, a lesson, but may sound like a message. But as long as it's from the Lord's Word and it's what we need, I, I think that's good. Amen. But uh, it's actually something that uh, Pastor Bob, but you know Diane too, she likes to pick on you. She said the next message, but this ain't my message, it's a lesson. But she said, you know, Phil, and Bob mentioned it to you guys, you need to uh, preach about patience. <laughs> so this is a lot about patience and stuff like that. So if you would, go to the uh, book of James, chapter 1. And I'll read a few verses and we'll have a word of prayer. And, uh, and it could be uh, an hour, you know always that, if, if you talked about everything that the Lord laid on your hearts. But we'll just do what we do. And But James uh, chapter 1, just like verses 2 through 4, it says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into driver's temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And let's pray. Dear Lord and our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another day, Lord. We thank you for the sunshine, but first and most of all, we thank you for your Son, Lord. And we pray you forgive us where we fail you. And I always say things we take for granted and vengeance thoughts and different things, everything that we do wrong or have thoughts, Lord. And I do pray that uh, you be with this lesson, that I speak no error and uh, speak what you lay on my heart from your word. And we just thank you so much for this church and the pastor and his family and pray you keep them safe and that they do have a good, comfortable time. And, we just uh, thank you again for salvation, most of all, and for being one amongst us that doesn't know you. We pray that they come to know you, because we always pray for your return and look for brighter days, Lord. We thank you and praise you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. But yeah, we're to pres preserve like several, several different ways, like going through trials. Isn't it hard to have patience when you're going through trials? I mean, uh, strive in spite of difficulties. But when we are Christians and we're saved, we experience a lot of unfavorable experiences, don't we? I mean, we don't want to go through and talk about all the things that we go through because I know everybody goes through something. And it's hard, that's when it's hard to have uh, say, uh, patience. But we go through the circumstances, but we're called to be like experience, with experience and have patience and allow God to use us with the things that are referable, our characters. We're supposed to, like, basically let our light shine. Amen? Amen. Personal, personally, you need to be saved and draw closer to God. That's, that's the whole bottom line to it. And there is a lot of verses, so, you know, I know it will be an hour, but 30 minutes, whatever. And you don't have to turn to each one. I'll just read them and go on. But it is about patience and how hard it is to do have patience when you're going through trials, tribulations, but what the Lord lays on our heart and what He wants us to do like Psalms 40, and it's just one verse, like I say, so if you don't go to all the verses, very understandable. I know before I've wrote down verses during messages and stuff and thought, wow, that's a lot, but then I'll do one in a nursing home and something that's a lot more. But Psalms 40, just first verse 1, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me and heard my cry. So if we do the right things, He hears us, he leads us, amen? amen. I mean, he, he does what we're supposed to, or shows us what it takes patience to trust God's time, amen? We have to have, have to be patient and wait on the Lord when it's different without with what, what we have in our mind. I mean, did anybody else have things in their mind you know you're not supposed to do? 
I know I sure do. But that's when I pray. And I, I've told Pastor one time, I said, I bet I pray 20, 30 times a day. You know, and, and he'll say that too. He'll say, I know, I have thoughts that I don't think I should have. But we are, as Christians, we are to concentrate or try to be patient, even with other people, not with just ourselves. Slow to anger. And, if you, and I should have said like a pastor in James again. We could have stayed there. But chapter 1, 19 through 21 And if I do wait for you to get there for each one, we will be here till the hour. Huh, John? <laughs> but uh, 19 through 21, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness and grafted word, which is able to save your souls. And that's the main thing, to be saved. And I always say, no matter where I do a message, that is the main course of the meal, salvation. But it's hard to bear with others, other people, I mean at times, when they hurt you, when they irritate you, they frustrate you. And it seems easy to, how do you say it, retaliate or whatever, to get even with them. I mean, that, isn't that just human? It goes through your minds. But, or to return injury for injury. You've heard pastors say that, right? <laughs> but, but it's hard not to do that. I mean, because we're to be patient with other people too. But we are, as to be saved and Christians, we are to be patient with them. And lots of times it's hard to make us that way. But people and worldly things will make me, I mean, not just about me, but I'm sure everybody, it will make you impatient. And uh, even coming to church. You know, I mean, we used to drive a half hour to church or whatever, but coming through all the red lights and stuff like that, yeah. You know, it's like... Mm -hmm. You know, and you wait. You got to wait. And there's some red lights. I got a red light now. I go to work, get off 76 at 44 there. It'll stay red on that one for almost five minutes. And you know what my wife asked me? Do you turn left on red, Phil? I said, no. <laughs> I do. I, you know, but it has crossed my mind because there's no traffic coming. There's no, doesn't look like no police officers around. Yeah. But I know if I did, there would be one. So, but the patience with everything in the world is, it is hard to do. Even coming to church, like I said, people drive really driving slow, people late for work, that gets on us sometimes, hurtful speaking, they speak words to you. I mean, in the place I work now, it is really hard, and I know the Lord put me there for a reason. But there is so many people there that are about partying and cursing and all that, you know. And I wore a shirt before I had to wear a certain kind of shirt. I wore that one that said, Jesus' last name is not... Yeah. And you don't know how many people out of 400 and some employees went. But now i got to wear a shirt. Don't say that. But, it, you know, you try to do what you can. I mean, let your light shine however you can. But as I said, people will make it hard. It's hurtful when they speak to us some ways, gossip, betrayal, people treating us bad or wrong. And uh, like Galatians, I said, we just go through a lot of verses and I was doing this. I was still up when my wife came home last night. And she goes, oh boy, how many pages you got written, Phil? I said, all kinds of them all over the table. But that's just notes, you know. And it's what the Lord lays on your heart. You can have all that up here and may not even use a lot of it. But it is. Galatians 5 and just one verse there in 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that's, that again, being impatient is like being of the flesh, of the world. But it, it's not the easiest thing to do. None of it is, even like letting our light shine. I like to do that every day. But there's a lot of days say, man, you don't, you don't look happy. Well, you know, whether you're in pain or you got something on your mind, you cannot always look that way. Yeah. And, and you try to, but it's just we're, we are part human. That's what I tell them. It's hard not to walk in flesh when people do things sometimes to you. Then act that way. Like while we're still in Galatians, let me make sure I got the right one. Can't be. Hmm. 17. No Galatians 17. So the same thing, 1722 there probably. For the flesh lusts us against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh in chapter 5. And these are contrary to one to another, how we're supposed to treat each, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye led of the spirit, and ye are not under the law, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, 
fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, set occasions. You know all these. Envies, murders, drunkenness, revealings, and such like of that which I tell you before as I, I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is the love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which is patience, gener gentleness, goodness, and faith. All those things that we really want to do. Patience is like grace in us. It puts grace in us or us who could revenge ourselves and feel like it but choose not to. And I don't say it prideful, but a lot of people in the world don't know how blessed they are because we don't do what is first laid on our minds. That's right. You know, because we are saved and we're trying to let our light shine and be patient with them and stuff. Otherwise, and I know I've said that, Pastor and I are close and, and it's, it's hard to say it, but yeah, because he worked for all them police departments and stuff. And I told him I'm surprised we didn't meet some other way, brother. <laughs> but, but he said the same thing. He said if we weren't saved, both of us would be either beware. And remember they rhymed. Jail or hell. Yeah. You know, because it, you, you definitely change, let your fruit, let your light shine, your fruit, all that. But patience or great is us rather than getting revenge when we want to. First Thessalonians 5. And if I memorize so many verses, we could just do that. But he, uh, Bob used to tell me that too. Your memory will get better, Phil. Really? It gets worse. First Thessalonians 5, and I believe just one verse there is, uh, but I, I think I will read a few more of them because they all go together. But 14, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, all people, men and women. But see that none render evil for evil under any man, but follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. i got to read these because I just love them. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ, just concerning you. Like, And that's another part. You know, I said and it could be a long and make it a message, but being thankful for everything is hard. Because there's things that's got on my heart and lately in the last year. But, you know, I pray I'm thankful for them. I'm still here, still going forward one way or another, whether it's spiritually, physically, financially. We're still here and the Lord is in our heart. We're still good. Amen. And uh, it's different ways we could treat people. <clears throat> Regardless of the circumstances, though, we should if exercise or however patience to all. And... This is, you know, and I, that's why I tell my wife and Bob would say it too, it's a lesson for you, Phil. Well, that's true though. I mean, patience is, and I even sent him a message back to him and said, what, what verse was it you, you told the church? Do you guys remember? He was reading one and he said, oh yeah, patience for Phil Blankenship. When we work out, I got to remind him all the time. <laughs> and I forget what verse it was, but I don't want to bother him. But uh, under circumstances, it, is it hard to be patient? And it is. But uh, we should exercise patience to, or Patience to all folks, all people, men, women, children, each and every one. Now, Colossians chapter 3 and just verse 12 I put. It says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of merciness, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. And long-suffering, again, I believe a lot of times that means patience. But that is, we need to adorn ourselves, however you say it. There, there you go. With patience. Do you do that, Adolf? Made me think of you, adorn ourselves. <laughs> but we have to have ourselves with patience. And it's, it's hard not to think or to do things that like are vengeance or revenge. I mean, because, and I know I've probably said that before, like a broken record, but we are just part, I always tell my wife and the nurse, we are just part human now. What do you mean? I said, well, if you're saved and you've got the Lord in your heart, you're only part human because you have the thoughts to do things. And Lord willing, you don't do everything that's laid on you. Because I definitely would not be standing up here if, if it did everything that went through your mind. Patience goes somewhat with waiting or not being violent, getting revenge, all that. I believe they go together. Psalms 37.
and like three through eight. <clears throat> and there is many, I didn't even look up how many, but there's a lot of verses that would tell us about patience and all that. You could go hours, but there's trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself, because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease not from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil." And like I said, there are so many verses that go through about patience and stuff like that. But if we have patience to wait on the Lord and believe that everything happens for a reason, I, I believe that there's all good days. Amen? Amen. I mean, a lot of people just at work, you know, because, and, and what pastor says a lot of times and preaches, and I know you all, it, it lays it right on your heart what you're thinking about. What was it last week? I don't remember if it was Sunday school or the 11 o'clock, but same old song and dance. When he said it. How many times have you said that? Man, I've said that at work and stuff. But when I tell people it's a good day because it's another day, it is odd that all the young people that I work with, they don't think that's right. You know, they don't believe that. But I'll go to the nursing home and the people that really look like they're feeling bad, going through a lot, they've even, and you guys, Joyce, some of you was there, they've gave testimonies that. It is a blessing to have another day. So for young people that I work with that are going, I got a job, I got money, doing whatever they want, and they don't think every day is good, they need to know the Lord. They need to come move forward. But Romans 12, and that's, I, and I'll just read these because these have been laid on my heart because you guys know what I went through with work and things. And I've even told them, folks, because they used to ask me to pray for them there, the owners, the bosses, at Christmas and all that, so I have sent them messages, told them I'm still praying for them, and this. <laughs> Romans 12, and it, like I, said, I think that's what the pastor's doing in Sunday school, so. so we won't go through a lot of them. And he'll probably be going through them next week or so, the ones I'm talking about, but he's been there. Romans 12, like 17 through 21. Recompense to no man evil for evil. That's hard to do too. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Let your light shine. If it, is, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome of evil with good. And when I went through that thing that I talked about, or whatever you all know, last fall or whatever, I read these verses so many times a day. And I actually told him, it's more information to me, but I did tell that one boss there, sent him a text telling him that, you know, miss you, blah, 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 and he believes in God. So all I ask is someday we get together and you tell me the truth since you really believe in God. Because I still pray for all you, and I pray for myself with a vengeance thought I have every day. And surprisingly, he sent me back, like I said, more information. But he sent me back a message telling me it was, he was glad to hear from me. It was very hard for him to come up with the decision he did, and he would like to get together someday. But, but if, you, if you do, and it is hard, but if you believe in the Lord, you have patience to be with the Lord, to wait on the Lord, and to not do things that are laid on your heart all the time. It is to patient isn't easy all the time, but you must be saved. Bottom line, I know about everybody here probably knows that, but and that's another saying I've heard for years: assume nothing. And you know, I assume everybody's saved, but that is the main thing. To have our patience and stuff, we must be saved. We must have trust in Jesus and daily devote ourselves to God, abide in His love through obedience, walking in His Spirit with the Holy Spirit of God is in our hearts. He will produce our, our fruit and let our light shine if that's what we pray and that's what we want to do. Amen? Amen. And uh, it is not easy, like I said, to devote ourselves every day and to be obedient. But I do believe 
if we weren't saved, we wouldn't be here. I mean, I know I wouldn't be. And, and that's why I say every day is a good day because I run into people that know me from, for 25 years and they're like, wow, you're different. Thank you. And it's not testimony time, but I was with Lois and I call them Lois and uh, Jerry. Jerry and Lois yesterday, and uh, I told them the place where I work now, the plant manager asked me what happened. And I, told, I just told him real quick how the old Phil, good thing the old Phil wasn't there, or what, I would have followed through with what was laid on my heart, you know. He says, what do you mean you changed? So I told him that I started going to church, got saved, know the Lord. And what a blessing it was, as Lois said. He stood up, shook my hand, and said he was so glad to hear that because he is too. Amen. And I said, as a plant manager, we should work on that. And that's what I told Brother Dave. I asked him to send with Ed and them the Bibles of John and Romans about truck drivers. So we could pass them out to truck drivers and people, but we'll see. But patient isn't easy. I mean, a lot of things is hard. It's hard to do. But if we have the Lord in our heart and try to do it, He will lay it on us. How patient God was, or still is. Yeah. <clears throat> like how patient God is with us is a good thing to remember. How He helps us to be more patient with others. How He considers us how much patience he had with his disciples and after being nailed to the cross like Luke chapter 23 and he does that just I don't know how you say it but as an example but he has a lot of patience as a say we wouldn't even be here right he wants everybody to be saved and I know for years and years I didn't even think about it but I never could be more thankful Okay, what I say? Luke 23. And this is another short one that everybody probably knows. But how he was, how patient he was with his disciples, even after everything he went through, even after they hung him on the cross. And he died for everyone. But it says, and then he then said, Jesus, this is after, you know, after the cross, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that's, isn't that the way the world is? A lot of things are being done. They really don't know what they are doing. So we're just, this is a thing. We're just try to let our light shine. Try to be like the Lord because he's, he's in our heart. The Holy Spirit will help us let our light shine by being patient, being nice or patient with all folks. Especially, like I said, how patient he was with the disciples and dying on the cross and all that and still being patient, that is an example that, as I say, as us being human, would never do nothing like that. There is no other way to heaven, as we say, except for Jesus. And we need to let our light shine and be like Him. And remember, we are not to be prideful, but to think highly. And sometimes don't we think highly of ourselves? I mean, not always prideful, or as I said, not always hideful, prideful, but we do think highly of ourselves and that we have more days and the things that we could do. And, it, and basically, we just got to think of all the blessings that we have, Amen. and that will help us be patient and not vengeance. Like I said, I know that's a verse I, I don't memorize word for word, but every time something goes crazy or somebody is really mean and violent or whatever, I just remember that vengeance is His, and, and He will do it. I mean, because he's, I mean, he's not like us. I mean, even though we say we're going to do something, it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't always happen. But does, is not the Lord the same? However, he's the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. He will always be the same. And he will be back. I pray for that. I pray for families that, and folks that don't know the Lord because I really look forward to his return. So remember, we're not to be prideful, not think too highly of ourselves. Like Proverbs 21 Another just short verse, but every way, verse 2, every way of a man is right in his own eyes. I mean, in the world, that's what people think. No matter what they think is right, is right, what they do. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth in our hearts. So he puts it in our hearts. And that's why I say it is. I am very thankful that when I get thoughts in my heart that I know I shouldn't do, then the Lord puts the right thing in our hearts. 
if we know him and we pray to him. Because I said, it is not easy. It's hard to do sometimes. And it isn't easy. Like, we're not in control of all others, are we? I mean, even if you're a boss or you run a, a business, all that, you're still really not in control of them, of their lives. And that's more things I like, you know, even jobs. Jobs are great, they're blessings. But what's the most important days is our family and the, the Lord, then our family. Like my wife will call me, if I, or I call her if i got to leave a message. You know what her, th her thing says is leave your name and your number. Well, you know my name and I'm number two. You know? <laughs> but it is. And uh, it's hard to do sometimes. It isn't easy because we're not in control of others. But how we treat them is very important. Of how we let our light shine, how we, how we treat them. Like this is another one that... Uh, I think, but I look at Matthew 7. That is very memorable to a lot of folks. Matthew 7 and verse 12 tells us, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. But that's a verse how we have to understand too is we want to be, you know, that's not the things like they did bad things to me to do that. And you all know that. But it's to treat them how you want to be treated. And the Lord treats us so good. Like I said, because we're here, we have another day. There's, you know, you have so much things. But it is not always easy. It's not. It's hard. It's hard to do a lot of things. But the main thing we just have to remember, like when we're in trials, tribulations, remember what? Remember God when we're in trials, trials and tribulations. Because our life is to draw us closer to what? Closer to Him. Remember again, like James 1, 2, 3, 4. And we don't have to go back there and read them again. But I think those are the verses that, and I will though, because I think those are the verses that Pastor Bob keeps reminding me. So I should memorize them and so he, next time he tells me, huh? But like when we're working out, because I go like this, that, and the other. And it made me think of patience yesterday too, and that's why I was up last night. I, I've been going to his house to look at it, get his mail, all that stuff, you know, more info. than. But I thought, okay, I want to go to the nursing home yesterday. I think I told you guys that too. But I was at work, so I thought, okay, maybe at lunch I'll go to Bob's, get that stuff done. And I only got a half hour for lunch, so, you know, I go down there, and uh, I get down there, and I only got a half hour. It only took about seven minutes, whatever, to get there. But when I get there, I do the mail, the paper, go in. You know, I always go down in, in the basement and check pumps, all that kind of stuff. Well, his basement, and he's, you see this? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, and, there's a, and that was the fifth or sixth time this week. But when you go down from one area to another, the ceiling or whatever is real low. So I'm running around trying to get out of there. Wham. It's like, what did I think? Patience. See, if I was patient, that wouldn't happen. But like two through four, brethren, count it all. When you fall into divers' temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience, and this too, you know, you go over that, but have her perfect work. Patience is her. But all that, work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing and if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally upbraid not and shall be given to him main thing is go to the Lord we thank the Lord and when wait on the Lord all will be good and we go through trials tribulations for a reason it is hard to believe but it is a reason Romans 5 and we're about to close out it won't be long I think 5 to 11 be an hour. Romans 5. And that's, you know, and that's why I think they tell me, Diane and them tell me about patience. It's because I've even, and people that go to the nursing home, I've wrote stuff down and that, whoops, this is the wrong verse I wrote down. But it must be for a reason too. Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. 
And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And God always intends for good. It is all for good. Amen? Just like, and this is one I know you memorize, 828. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. And are there times when we shouldn't be patient? No. There's all times we need to be patient. There's times, so many times when we think about not being patient, but we should always be patient. And I had a whole list of questions that come up to me. But we ain't going to go through that. I didn't even write them down because I knew it was too much. Just a few more verses though, then I'll close out. Because Romans 12, 17 through 21, we already read those, I think, didn't we? You don't have to go back to that. But that is something that I go every day with praying for. And I was told once don't pray for patience because it could bring this or that. Well, I believe whatever the Lord wants to bring me is going to happen. Amen. And I pray what He lays on my heart. But we... Our times we should be pa- or we think we shouldn't be patient, but we've got to remember it's all for the Lord and we've got to be patient. First Thessalonians 5. Yeah, what page is that? <laughs> First Thessalonians 5, verse 14 through 18. And this is another one where we don't have to read them all, but it'd be quick. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves, or is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice every more, pray without ceasing, and in everything, like I said these before, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ, Jesus concerning you. And then 1 Timothy, and this is it. 1 Timothy 1. And I'll read 14 through 16. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and a worthy worthy of all exception, acceptation, and that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here we go. And of who? I am chief. Yeah, I feel that too. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. And as I say, always say that, that's the main thing is salvation. And if we saved and know the Lord and we pray to have patience and wait on him, the main biggest blessing there is what? That life everlasting. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord and our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for that eternal hope in heaven, Lord. And I do pray that All the folks we run into, the ones come here, even in the world, Lord, that we can let our light shine, treat them as we're supposed to, even as it's hard and we're part human, we don't, but we thank you, Lord, that that we can, everyone can be saved and you died for each and every every soul, Lord. We just pray that all would come to know you before it's too late because we do pray for your return because then no one would uh, have that physical death, Lord. We'd have that family reunion in heaven and we look forward to that, but we thank you for your word and I do pray, you know, that this lesson that we do this each and every day and we try to be patient with all folks lord even as hard as it is and we remember that vengeance is yours lord i thank you for this church pray for each and every member each and every teacher deacon trustees each and every one of them lord and pray you be with pastor bring him and his family back safe and again most of all we thank you for your son ask you forgive us where we fail you things we take for granted and some of the thoughts i have lord we thank you we praise you and amen